Ethical governance refers to the standards of conduct and behaviour of all local government employees and their elected councillors. The Ethical Governance Framework is not a document, it's not a book, it's a series of measures that the council takes to ensure it has high standards. An example of this would be our Gifts and Hospitality Register, or our Anti-Fraud and Corruption Strategy, and our Whistleblowing Policy, and also the fact that we have a, an Audit Committee and a Standards Committee. All these things are part of the framework. One element of the framework I think that everybody will um, understand is the Code of Conduct for employees and for councillors. Uh, and these set out the standards of behaviour that we expect from, from everyone uh, while they're carrying out their public duties. In Bury, there are two people who have an important role to play in maintaining our ethical standards. And they are the Section 151 officer and the monitoring officer. The Section 151 officer is responsible for the financial aspects of the code and the monitoring officer is responsible for the legal and democratic elements. In Bury, the Section 151 officer is our Director of Finance and E-Government, Michael. Well, the Section 151 role involves about four main duties. The first of those is to provide uh, sound financial management to the council and good quality financial control. So that can involve providing the members with um, good quality financial advice and information, uh, a sound set of accounts so people can see how we've spent our money. And one of the most important things is to provide good quality um, controls against fraud so that we make sure public money is spent properly. The second point is about contributing to corporate management and leadership. So that's really operating outside the financial box, but it does involve helping the council to tackle some of the wicked issues of the day, and they may include things like um, our response to the recession to help people through the recession, dealing with the changes in the VAT rates, uh, some big land deals, regeneration schemes, uh, looking at new schools. So it's really outside of the general financial role, moving into more general management issues. The third point is about advising councillors and senior officers on, on the details of local government finance. It can be a mind-bogglingly complicated issue and it's, it's really important that I'm there to help guide them through the complexities of it and to help them tackle some of the very complex issues such as pensions, tax, etc. And the final point is leading an effective finance service. Um, finance is a very important support service and it's important that we do it properly and important that we do it efficiently. So that involves paying our suppliers, our staff, collecting money in, safeguarding our uh, assets and most importantly collecting the council tax. Jane Hammond is our Director of Legal and Democratic Services and she's also the council's monitoring officer. The core role of the monitoring officer is to support members in lawfully carrying out their functions, their political aims and to protect the public interest. A good example of when this might be used is around the closure of facilities such as schools and homes for the elderly. The monitoring officer must ensure that the decision is rational, based on relevant evidence, proper and adequate consultation and doesn't run contrary to people's human rights. Members of the public require high standards of conduct from councillors and officers. For example, members of the public would not expect a councillor to sit on a planning matter if he or she had an interest in the property or if it affected his family's property. Nor would they expect an officer to take a decision if they'd been offered valuable hospitality or a gift. The monitoring officer's role is therefore to maintain and ensure those high standards along with the standards committee and if necessary to investigate and enforce the standards rules if there is misconduct by a councillor. Another important responsibility is the effective operation of the constitution. As the council is responsible for spending large amounts of public money and providing crucial public services, good governance is at the heart of everything that we do. This is essential to ensure public trust in local government. There also has to be increasing engagement between the council and its communities and therefore there must be increasing accountability and transparency in everything that the council does. The executive structures we put in place at the council to replace the old bureaucratic committee system support these objectives in that people then know who's made a decision and how it's been made and it therefore becomes more accountable and transparent. For example, decisions such as whether we have a congestion charge or not and how much money is spent on town centre redevelopment. The monitoring officer must ensure that these systems work effectively and that people can access the decisions and the information relating to those decisions. 
The reputation of this authority is very important to us. And we need to raise the awareness of everyone on the ethical governance framework. We'd like everyone to participate in the e-learning packages that are going to be available to you shortly.